John, I was particularly interested in the episode of your podcast that dealt with the polio epidemic. I found it mm -hmm. particularly gripping and a great review of history. What did you find yourself relearning uh, by researching and telling the story all over again? Science matters. Science, science, science. Facts matter. Uh, I've got John Adams on the brain for some reason tonight. Facts are stubborn things, as, as John Adams said. Uh, Salk and Sabin, they, they, they drove their processes in a search for a vaccine that would alleviate an enveloping national gloom that was not simply emotional, but physical and ambient. And they did it by be by pure research. And unfortunately, right now, and, and Michael posted a picture of this the other day, uh, you had President Eisenhower in a very rare moment. I can only think of two moments, Michael, where Ike cried publicly. Uh, one was right. the polio vaccine and the other was 1964, wasn't it, when he was at D-Day with Cronkite? I think that's right. Uh, when he was at yes, the and also 52 when he was talking to a group of D-Day survivors, but that really brought it out in him. Right. So, uh, so you have you have that remarkable moment, and and then you 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 have this. And today, our problem is, it seems to me, is you have a president who is not is at least staying out of the way of science. He's actively interfering with it because of political and economic short-term indicators. When everything, every person who knows what they're talking about tells us is we have to be careful about how we reopen. And the president, who, as our colleague Joe Scarborough likes to say, he's a day trader. So he wants to open up now to make today better for him. And then he figures he'll clean it up later. Michael, indeed, as and, a and devoted also, follower of yours on. Sure, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, and also running for re-election and, and governing his responses to this crisis, I think a lot of the people who think that he does care are put off by that. Franklin Roosevelt in 1940, Hitler was on the march, the Japanese were on the march. Roosevelt, if he were going to be helping his re-election, would have said, I'm going to be an isolationist because most Americans don't want to get in, involved in a war and lose you know, members of their family. Instead, he said, We've got to rearm and we also have to have a draft. And he did that just a few days before he ran for re-election. was not helpful to him, but he knew that that's what the presidency is. I was about to compliment you as another dedicated follower of yours on social media. I was a stunned to remember that picture of Eisenhower uh, crying, not the guy we tend to uh, think about and memorialize as Supreme Allied Commander and President. This was your posting today, the holiday that used to be called Decoration Day Memorial, uh, Memorial Day at Arlington National Cemetery during the influenza pandemic. Uh, this is May 1990. 19. Michael, talk about all of the ways we were so very different. Well, look at that picture. There was no social distancing. That was at least a year into the pandemic. And you also had a president who was a very cold hearted and selfish person, which was Woodrow Wilson, who wanted to run the war for most of this, uh, the time of the previous year, wanted to stay popular, didn't want people to be upset by the idea that there was a pandemic, and so never spoke in public about the fact that 670,000 plus Americans were dying of this influenza. That's the opposite of what you want from a president. You want a president with a heart so that even if he makes mistakes, people will say it's not because he's indifferent, it's because he's human. And John Meacham, let's talk about grievance. Has grievance ever marked a presidency as much as grievance marks this presidency? You know, I'll, I'll offer this to be fact-checked by, by both of you. I, I didn't think we would ever see a level of self-pity and rage more than what we heard on the Nixon tapes. Uh, right. And, that, that used you know, to be the gold uh, right. standard. Right. Uh, Donald Trump makes Richard Nixon look like uh, a family therapist. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, right. it's a whole different, you know, Mr. Rogers, you know, uh, it's just a whole right. different level. And 
Yeah, and so much of it is for us all to see. Um, you know, I think that that to me, in, in many ways, the, the, this is the, the there are two essential points about Trump. One is competence, which is uh, mediocre and at best. And the other is because he is unwilling, as Michael was just saying, to admit that he, he's made a mistake, because he's unwilling to climb out of a superlative self-referential bubble. On testing is the thing that comes to mind. You know, whenever testing comes up, well, we have more in the world, which, Brian, as you pointed out, right. is not true. Uh, so it's not true. And it doesn't matter because it, it's not a race in that sense. It's about the health and, and security of, of the nation. And but he, he falls back on this because he seems to be congenitally incapable of acknowledging that anything could be done better much less that a mistake was made. And I think we're going to study this presidency forever with a particular focus on what you just raised. Why is it, why was it that he was not only unable or unwilling to learn on, on the job, but that he was unable to admit in the face of something that is threatening his reelection, right? So let's just not say it's the best thing, it's the right thing to do. We'll leave that aside. His reelection is dependent on his management of this crisis. He has not managed this crisis well because he's unable to do what everyone since the Enlightenment has done, which is respond to data in a rational as opposed to a reflexive way. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.